was stabbed to death. His eyes were cut out in what county police say was a satanic Paso was a dropout, a drifter, and a drug user and dealer. He had a fascination with the devil. What police chief Robert Harris doesn't believe it. I don't believe there was a cult. It was a school with three people who walked around the satanic literature. Cal Harbor Park. The words that said acid king. Fires and held satanic rituals around. That's That wasn't true. 17-year-old Gary Rowers was stabbed to death. His eyes were cut out in what county police say was a satanic ritualistic killing. On March 29, 1967, Richard Allen Castle was born in Huntington, Long Island, New York. His mother was a high school teacher. His father, a gym teacher for the local nearby school district of Cold Spring Harbor. Nicknamed Ricky, Ricky would meet up often with local stoners in seventh grade for after school football. There, he met James Torriano, juvenile delinquent, who's admittedly been in probation for burglary the third. Ricky would frequently talk of his hatred of football, a resentment due to overwhelming pressure from his father. As young teens, Ricky and James would often take fishing trips to upstate New York, alone, Saratoga. Ricky's parents owned property and a summer camp. There, they would hallucinate all the wild fish. April 1983, Ricky and a group of his friends got together to dig up an old 19th century grave. Name on the grave? Joseph Morrell. However, this was not the first attempt by an acid-fueled team. October 1983, Ricky was captured and arrested for both incidents via Detective Barley. For an incident in the mausoleum, and a stolen skull and a hand. After a probation violation, James Soriano was sentenced to a 10-month jail sentence. He was released June 17, 1984. Two days later, on June 19, 1984, James would meet up with Ricky, 17-year-old Gary Lowers, and a 40 the initial plan was to lure Gary Lowers into a wooded area and confront him about money that was owed from the past. Some people may say it was a nasty deal gone wrong. Others say it was angel dust that was picked from Ricky Castle's pocket by Gary Lowers himself. The truth remains to be debated. The three teens were successful in luring Gary Lowers into the woods of Northport, New York. Together, all four teens had took about 10 tabs of acid and ingested multiple bags of angel dust apiece. It was then and there that Ricky Casso had pulled out a knife and stabbed 17-year-old Gary Lowers over 30 times. Then, he gouged out Gary Lauer's eyeballs. All the while, he was screaming at Gary Lauer to repeat, I love Satan. Gary Lauer's response, I love my mother. Gary Lauer had died. For two weeks, the body of Gary Lauer lay dead rotting, mutilated by wildlife animals. Ricky and James attempted to move the body of Gary Lowers into a shallow grave. 
In the process, Gary's head fell off. Their attempt to keep this heinous murder a hush is falling through the cracks. It's Ricky Casso and James Soriano continuously brought nearby high school students from Northport High School to Northport, New York, the woods, where Gary Lowers would stab to death. They would continuously show the bodies to random teenagers. Word quickly spread of what was happening. Gary Lowers, mind you, was missing for two weeks. Responding to tips from a female Northport High School student, detectives and local police officers discovered the body of Gary Lowers, brutalized, mutilated, in the woods of Northport Village. Ricky and James were captured July 5th, 1984. They were sleeping off Fourth of July all night acid trip just hours earlier. They were captured in their car in an abandoned parking lot. During interrogation, James Torriano and Ricky Casso made no bones about what they had done to the body of Gary Lowry. Just two days later, July 7, 1984, Ricky Casso at Riverhead Correctional Facility was dead. He hanged himself. 17-year-old Gary Lowers was stabbed to death. His eyes were cut out in what county police say was a surprise. Mr. Casso was a dropout, a drifter, and a drug user and dealer. June 19th, 1984. Ricky Casso and James Soriano led 17-year-old Gary Lowers into a wooded area of nearby Northport Village. There, they would take multiple hits of acid and murder 17-year-old Gary Lowers. 2 weeks both Ricky Casso and James Soriano continuously brought nearby teenagers over to the gravesite of Gary Lowers where he would lay July 5th 1984 Ricky and James were apprehended by local authorities taken to the nearby precinct while Ricky Castle was in custody at Riverhead Correctional Facility, he hanged himself. The only person left to stand trial, James Torriano. James had a bigger problem. Not only was his history of arrest as a juvenile delinquent coming back to haunt him, but there was also a fourth person in that woods that night. Enter Albert Canonis. Albert was hanging out with James, Ricky, and Gary the night that Gary Lowers was murdered. In fact, he was there when Gary Lowers was murdered. Eric Nyberg of Nyberg and Rosenblum represented James Soriano during trial. After James gave four different alibis, Nyberg came to the conclusion. James Soriano was way too high to remember exactly what happened that day. Therefore, he cannot stand trial. But what about Albert Canonis? Albert Canonis was so high on drugs 
throughout that time, from the murder to being on trial, that Albert Conronis and none of his testimony could stand trial. Therefore, James Soriano was ultimately found not guilty for the murder of Gary Lowers. This horrific incident has led to multiple documentaries, movies, books. The most famously known as the book labeled Say You Love Satan. Today, Gary Lowers and Richard Casso lie dead. James Soriano ultimately beat his rap case for murder. Few questions still remain though even till today. Was there really a cult? Was Ricky Castle really known as the Acid King of New York? Or is this just all Hollywood in the making? Yes, Gary Lowers did die at the hands of Ricky Castle. But there's more questions still left unanswered. Next week, we unveil part three, the last part of this episode, Acid King Ricky Castle. As we dig deeper into, was Ricky Castle really the Acid King of New York? And was there really a satanic cult? Police Chief Robert Harrison doesn't believe it. I don't believe there was a cult. There was a school with three people who worked around the satanic around. That's, that wasn't true. Northport Village, Long Island, New York, June 19, 1984. Richard Casso, James Torriano, Gary Lowers, and Albert Cronona were hanging out in a nearby woods. There, Gary Lowers was stabbed to death, with his eyes cut out. His clothes were torn and thrown in the nearby fire that they had just made. While Gary Lowers lied dead, James Torriano and Richard Ritchie Casso were charged with murder a few weeks later. Richard Castle hanged himself at Suffolk County Correctional Facility, being held. Problem is, this sheriff that made that statement is a crooked sheriff. Under multiple investigations of brutality and violence towards the Riverhead Correctional Facility inmates. On top of that, a majority of the witnesses that came forward and said that they've seen the body of Gary Lowers within the weeks after his death were no longer able to take the stand against Richard Casso, James Soriano, or Albert Cononis. James Soriano and Albert Cononis were put on trial. Ricky Casso hanged himself in jail, mind you. None of these witnesses were able to take the stand because many of these witnesses who've seen the body of Gary Lowers came forward to Rolling Stone magazine, Kids in the Dark, was the article that was published about the Asher King Ricky Castle murder. Due to their take in the Rolling Stone magazine article, none of these witnesses were able to go to trial and actually testify on their behalf of what they seen. Political this has dug even further into the case of Gary Lauer. Warning, what you about to see and hear will shock you. It will disgust you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Acid King, Ricky Casso, part four, more than meets the eye.
that satanic ritual was around. That's that wasn't true. July 5th, 1984. Both Richard Casso and James Soriano were apprehended for the murder of Gary Lavin. While in question, Detective Walter Walkenthal of the Suffolk County Police Department stated that both Richard Casso and James Soriano had waived their rights to a lawyer and had voluntarily given confession to the investigator. Problem. Both James Soriano and Richard Casso were minors, which means all their interrogation and interviews were null and void and illegal to begin with at the hands of Detective Walter Walkenstein. James Soriano and Richard Casso were then transferred to the Riverhead Correctional Facility held on the murder of Gary Lauer. It was there that Richard Casso hanged himself. The local night watch walked past Richard's cell at 12.30 a.m. in the morning. There, Richard Castle was sound asleep. When he made his second round, about 1 a.m., Richard Casso was in his cell, hanged. Riverhead Correctional Facility for decades has been riddled with abuse and abandonment, including one, Mr. John P. Finnerty. In 1983, January, Correction Officer Ramos testified several white officers dressed as an Hispanic inmate in a straw hat, a sheet, and a sign that read a racial slur and referred to him as Ramos's son. Ramos stated in the report, The Independent went as far as saying, Our jail infrastructure facilitates racial injustice throughout Suffolk County. That's the name of the article they had. In the article it reads, It is time to talk about closing Riverhead Jail as the first step in addressing the county's looming $1 billion plus deficit and envisioning a more equitable Long Island. 2012, Suffolk County faced litigation from the New York Civil Liberties Union. In another article, it reads, Suffolk County correction officers punched, kicked, and stomped an inmate at the Riverhead Jail, who later died from his injury. According to a federal wrongful death lawsuit filed last month by the sister of the dead man, the lawsuit filed in centralized federal court on July 6th by Valerie Wright, Queens, says Wright's brother Andre Siva was assaulted in June 2015 by several unidentified sheriff's officers following a search of his cell at the Riverhead Correctional Facility. Siva was paralyzed from the waist down as a result of the attack and died about six weeks later. Another article about Scott Yarwood, 34 years old of Wanda, died December 3rd at Stony Brook University. This article is from the Riverhead News Review. It states Mr. Yarwood was found about 2.15 p.m. on November 29th and was initially transported to Conic Bay Medical Center by ambulance volunteers. The Conic Bay Medical Center is actually the Riverhead Hospital where Richard Castle was taken and died. Mr. Yarwood was taken there and died. Let me rephrase that. He was later transferred to Stony Brook where he died. In another report, Sergeant Ronald Brooks, a spokesperson for the jail, said that officers performed CPR and mouth-to-mouth -mouth techniques and then rushed Mr. Castle to Central Suffolk Hospital in Riverhead, where he's pronounced dead at 2.17 a.m. 
So one hour and 17 minutes later is when Richard Castle was pronounced dead. When the hospital was just minutes away. Mr. Soriano, who was also alone in his cell, was immediately placed under a round-the-clock observation. The man who answered the telephone at the home of Mr. Castle's family in Northport said the family would have no comment. Sheriff Finity said both were processed through an inmate classification system and for their own protection were assigned to individual cells in the maximum security jail, which was described yesterday as overcrowded with 800 prisoners in spaces designed for about 600 prisoners. He exhibited no undue stress and was treated as any other inmate. Sheriff Finnerty claims that in a jail that's only designed for 600 people was overcrowded by an extra 200 people and Mr. Castle and Mr. Soriano made it to their very own cells with nobody else. In a case entitled Butler vs. Suffolk County United States District Court, Eastern District of New York, April 5th, 2012. Mac Butler, 37 years old, was detained at the Suffolk County Correction Center, located in Riverhead, New York. He's been, at the time, detained since January 2011 and is still awaiting trial. At all times, while detained at the Suffolk County Correctional Facility, Mr. Butler claims to have been exposed to the conditions described in the complaint. Nature of Action The men detained in the Suffolk County Correctional Facility, the majority of whom have not been convicted of any crime, are subjected to inhumane conditions that pose unreasonable and substantial risk to their health. The men are forced, forced to live in overcrowded conditions amidst filth, overflowing sewage, Pervasive, pervasive, excuse me, mold, rust, and vermin. Fifth Circuit once noted, quote, no one in civilized society should be forced to live under conditions that force exposure to another person's bodily waste. To this day, that statement about bodily waste at the Riverhead Correctional Facility still holds true. Mr. Paul Alford, 21. This is the same case. Grew up in Suffolk County, Bayshore, New York. Carpenter and an electrical wire. <clears throat> Carpenter and electrical wire. Excuse me. He was detained in that facility since September of 2011. Mr. Alvarez is currently serving a sentence for a non-violent crime. At all times, while detained in the Suffolk County Correctional Facility, Mr. Alver has been exposed to the conditions described in the complaint. Mr. Kevin King, 27 years old. He was also detained at the Suffolk County Correctional Facility in Riverhead. While he was there, Mr. Ricky Lynch, 49 years old, spent much of his life in Suffolk County in Quorum, New York, and ran a cleaning business prior to his incarceration in Suffolk County Correctional Facility. Mr. Lynch was actually detained in Yapping from July of 2010 to November of 2010, then to Riverhead from November of 2010 to October 2011. Mr. Lynch was convicted in October 2011 of a non-violent crime. At all times, while detained in Suffolk County Correctional Facility, Mr. Lynch was exposed to conditions described in the complaint. Mr. Clyde Lofton, 26 years old. The New Yorker has even came out and posted an article stating, the New York Civil Liberties Union seizing on the show's use of the Riverhead Correctional Facility launched a campaign called Humanity is the New Black or hashtag Humanity is the New Black. The protest condition, Riverhead and at Yapang another Suffolk County jail. Quote, I think the NYCLU campaign is great, Piper Kerman.
Moving further into the New Yorker article, what if the problem in the bathroom weren't the lack of privacy, but rather that every time someone flushed, her waste would surface in the neighboring stall? Those are some of the more than 90 complaints filed by inmates at the correctional facility in Suffolk County, where Orange is the New Black has filmed their second season. People vs. James Torriano. According to Detective John F. Gallagher, at least four teenagers and possibly other members of the cult witnessed the slaying in which Mr. Castle plunged a knife 17 times into the head, neck, and chest of the victim. The problem with that statement is, according to Northport Village Police, there was no cult. According to those who knew Richard Casso and James Soriano, there was no cult. According to the police statement, after the fact to the news and to the media and to the public, there were only four teenagers in total, not five. This article was posted by the New York Times. Why was there a confliction of truth? Kids in the Dark, Rolling Stone Magazine. November 22, 1984. This is the controversial article. The controversial article contained numerous eyewitnesses before and after the murder of Gary Lowry, some of which knew both James Soriano and Gary Lowry, some of which knew all three. These controversial articles were published in the Rolling Stone magazine, in the article known Kids in the Dark. Once again, November 22nd, 1984, Suffolk County attempted to get these individuals in this article on the stand for the trial of James Torriano. Unfortunately, due to the SHIELD law, it strictly protects the Civil Rights Law 79-8 commonly referred to as the shield law, the subpoenas should be squashed. Every subpoena was squashed. Nobody actually took the stand that was involved in this article. The shield law provides that a news reporter shall not be held in contempt by any court for refusing or failing to disclose any news or the source of any such news coming into his possession in the course of gathering or obtaining news for publication or to be published in a newspaper, magazine, or for broadcast by radio or television transmission station or network. None of these individuals were able to make it to trial. Richard Casso and James Soriano both signed statements as, as minors, which is illegal. The detective that interrogated both men said they waived their rights to a lawyer, which is illegal. They were both minors. Richard Castle then goes to correctional facility in Riverhead, New York, where he's pronounced dead via hanging. This is according to a corrupt sheriff who has been known and under investigation several times for being violent. This is coming from the Suffolk County Correctional Facility, who still to this day is under investigation for their brutality. James Soriano. Everybody has a right to a fair trial. When all the evidence is not brought forward, whether guilty nor not guilty, whether it works in the favor of the suspect or the victim, a fair trial is a fair trial. James Soriano, although he was found not guilty, did not have a fair trial. Due to the Rolling Stone magazine, refusal to cooperate in this case. Only one question stands. What really happened with Gary Lauer? Tune in for part five. Acid kick, Ricky Castle. Political death.
The reason why part one and part two is so short is because honestly we cut the bullshit out. That's really what happened. We ended up cutting the bullshit out of a lot and which leveled it down because when you're telling the truth, the truth itself about the Ricky Castle situation, the truth itself about the Ricky Castle, Gary Lauer situation is so incredible and just so twisted and so dark. There was no reason, we felt that there was no reason to actually just, you know, bullshit everybody on it and over-exaggerate on shit that happened. And 17-year-old Gary Lowers was stabbed to death. We didn't want to, yeah, it's, it's really short, but it's really truthful. We didn't Hollywood the shit out of it. Like the media did. Like the books did. Like the movies did. Was Ricky Castle the acid king of New York? was a dropout, a dresser, and a drug user and dealer. Absolutely not. 100% false. Ricky Castle was never, nor would he ever become the Aston King of New York. In the 1980s, okay, you're a high schooler, pretty much junkie, okay? Not because you take drugs, but because you're a junkie. High schooler junkie from Northport Village, New York, in the 1980s, early 1980s, and you're going to tell me you're the Aston King of New York? Good luck on that one, Chief. Doesn't work. Chief, good luck on that one. Does not work. You're not going to convince anybody. In the early 1980s, in Northport Village or anywhere in, in the state, the entire state of New York, no matter where you're from, that you're the acid king of New York. And you could barely scratch your ass. Police Chief Robert House doesn't believe it. I don't believe there was a was Ricky Castle, was there a cult? Was Ricky Castle part of a cult? A satanic cult? No. <clears throat> and we made that clear. We made that 100% clear during the promos for it. We made that 100%. had satanic rituals around. That's, that wasn't true. I don't believe there was a cult. There was a school with three people who walked around with satanic literature. Ricky Castle was not part of a huge satanic cult. If he was part of a satanic cult, was there two people in it? Because that's the only person he hung out with, was one other person, James Toriano. The truth is, Political is Radio, when we were doing this, um, investigating everything and doing all of our research, we wanna, I, I made it perfectly clear that I wanted to go on the truth and the facts that we had, I didn't want to go out of the realm and explain like, oh, he had a cheeseburger one day and got upset and threw it, or something stupid like that. That had nothing to do with, you know what I'm saying, what has to do with the situation at hand. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we did um, talk about football and how he resented his father for that and how he went to the, uh, you know... It, how he went to the library and tripped out and how he went up um, upstate with James Soriano and they tripped out, you know, because they're part of an acid, freaking huge satanic acid cult, but yet there's only two of them. And people ended up believing this. So, Northport Village, okay? Northport Village, at one time, was the home of Mick Foley in the late 90s, okay? Northport Village, well, not Northport Village, but the town of Northport, in the late 90s was the home of McFoley. It's the home of V.D. Falco. Fires, and I had satanic rituals around. That's, that wasn't true. 17-year-old Gary Lowers was stabbed to death. His eyes were cut out in what county police say was a satanic, ritualistic killing. Northport, New York is also the home, okay, of the uh, Long Island Railroad expansion when it expanded westward. That started in Northport Railroad. That's when they went through uh, Kings Park and Smithtown and, you know, all the way through Port Jeff to Rocky Point and further. But yet, everybody seems to assume or associate Northport, New York with this one horrendous incident, Ricky Casso and James Torriano and the murder of 16-year-old Gary Lowers. Was there a satanic cult was there a real acid king of New York named Ricky Castro? No. The question remains is, why do books, movies, and media alike continuously crown 
Ricky King, the Aston King of New York. Ricky King. Ricky Castle, the Aston King of New York. Why do they continuously say that there was a satanic cult in Northport, New York? When, truth be told, there was nothing. It was just an acid head, his friend, and a really gruesome murder. That's really the Hollywood behind it. Nothing else, anything else that's been said from the movies, from the books, is pure bullshit. 110% bullshit. It's all Hollywood, and it's all drags it all out, just so you think that it's a lot worse than what it was. It's already bad to begin with. This is the truth about Rick. Seventeen-year-old Gary Lowers was stabbed to death. His eyes were cut out in what county police say was a satanic Paso was a dropout, a drifter, and a drug user and dealer. He had a fascination with the devil. Police Chief Robert Harris doesn't believe it. I don't believe there was a cult. There was two or three people who walked around the satanic kind of literature. Fires and they had satanic rituals around. That's that wasn't true. Seventeen year old Gary Lowers was stabbed to death. His eyes were cut out in what county police say was a satanic ritualistic killing.